You're listening to Chain Leak, Leak, the crypto news podcast with your host, Joshua Roomsberg. Follow and subscribe today. Welcome to the Chain Leak podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Roomsberg. Today's episode is about open fabric, blockchain powered AI, with special guest, Andre Tara. Welcome to the show, brother. Thank you very much. Very glad to be here. All right. So to get into the episode, give the listeners an introduction to Open Fabric and what you guys are doing for the industry. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, you know, in a nutshell, we, we are trying to make AI technology available to everyone. So in order to enable that, we are building a planetary skill network, which is able to run and execute any AI application you know, uh, that can be used by everyone, not only by you know, very, uh, you know, uh, v- very highly technical people or people with fancy infrastructure. Rather, this can be used by everyone, by every, every single individual. So this is like, you know, our, okay. our main, main, main vision. We try to make AI technology accessible to everyone. So it's not blockchain specific. It could be any user around the world. Yes. So we, you know, we took all these, you know, great concepts from blockchain. We, we understood the power of blockchain and how this can be used to scale up artificial intelligence. You know, the blockchain is one of the core components of our protocol. Uh, but of course, on top of that, we have to build many other things. So, uh, you know, in, in a nutshell, when we build open fabric protocol, we actually have to push the limit of Web3 itself because, you know, okay. up to this moment, you know, when we thought about, you know, a layer one, a blockchain, uh, we only thought about, you know, crunching number, doing transaction and things like that. But when it's about scaling up artificial intelligence, there's a lot more things around. So essentially, we took all the, um, all the great things and, and everything was happening with, with blockchain as a way to scale up things, as a way to create huge networks. And we integrate yeah. that in, 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 the, in the core of Open Fabric. Okay, so when you compare it to other AI applications that are on the market, how is the blockchain factor different from what we see with open AI? So, uh, you know, open AI, it's, it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's one of these, you know, big corporation, they have their own infrastructure, their own data center. But at the end of the day, all this technology is controlled by, these companies, this, this, uh, uh, corporation and they centralized keep, entity. Yeah. They, they, they centralize and they silo it, you know, they, they keep it and they provide limited access to people and they yeah. can control everything. They can control the price. They can control if you have access or no tweet with open fabric, things are different. We are building a decentralized okay. network that is capable to execute the same AI capabilities as open AI. With the main difference that is decentralized and that mean is, is not anymore controlled by a centralized entity rather is like a, yeah. a sort of, uh, you know, public good. And it's, it's available to everyone is, is not anymore siloed. It's not anymore constrained by, by a single entity. I like that a lot because when you use a variety of different AI applications that are available right now, you see limitations based on what you can search for, the different type of answers you receive. And that's all based on the limitations set from the higher ups within these protocols. So you're saying that open fabric, there's going to be no limitations, no censorship. Yeah. Essentially we want to create, of course we we want to assure a certain quality, but you know, we don't want to be gatekeeper. We don't want to, you know, enforce limitation. Rather, we want to use community as a curator. So, for instance, if, if let's say a developer is creating an AI application and is deployed on, on top of, you know, our protocol, uh, and if, of course, this doesn't work good or it has some problem, then we can use, like, the, the rating and feedback from the community to curate that. So, you know, you need okay. some curation. You need some way to filter bad things 
but you know, we, without necessarily being like uh, the gatekeeper, without being like the like the the the, the you know the entity which is you know uh, limited things, the end all be all for the application itself. Yeah. So it, in yeah in 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 a nutshell, it's about you know as as, as I as I mentioned, it's about utilizing people feedback people who utilize those applications and they use that to get that feedback and to and to use it at the protocol level to you know to curate bad things because it, you know sometimes when you provide too much freedom some people are are uh, taking advantage Take of advantage. that so yeah when you think about the protocol let's go into open fabric as a layer 1 for artificial intelligence Yes, yeah, so uh, you know, Open Fabric it's it's a layer one because it's it's something fundamental. In, in a way, you know, we created like a distinct new type of uh, you know a, a feature on top of blockchain. So you know, okay. at the beginning, it, you know, we have you have Bitcoin that they creating a new way to for people to you know to transact and send value like money. The second generation was like, you know, Ethereum and all the, all the other like altcoins, which, which are doing th things very similar to Ethereum. So they introduced the smart contract. So the idea that you have money with execution power, like, you know, this smart contract where you can do the, all this kind of interaction. And right now we see most of the Web3 ecosystem is built on top of that concept of smart contract. Now, Open Fabric is the next, is the next, you know, uh, the, the next natural step in that. So now it is not about building decentralized app, which are, you know, based on smart contracts, rather are, are based on utilizing artificial intelligence. So in, in this way, open fabric, it's, it's an, it's a new layer one because it's, it's a new type of, uh, uh, protocol, which doesn't exist, uh, up to open fabric. There were some projects trying to do this kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, innovation. But unfortunately, okay. they, they didn't manage to do it, they didn't manage to bring it to reality. So, you know, Open Fabric is the first layer one, which essentially let people to utilize artificial intelligence in a new way, in a much more simple way. Because you don't have to be a technical person. You, you don't have to own a very complex infrastructure, which is now the case. So right now, if you want to uh, utilize an AI application, you, you, are, you either have to pay for some very fancy infrastructure, which is very expensive or to have it yeah. in house. Now with open fabric, all of that is, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's taken away. So essentially you don't care about all this detail anymore. So I have two more questions right here with any data that comes through the open fabric infrastructure. Is there any way to delete that data with the blockchain incorporated? So essentially, uh, this, this is actually a very, very good question because, you know, um, we actually build something which you call it the DOS or the decentralized operating system. And, 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 and this is okay. important. Essentially, it's like your computer operating system with the main difference that is operating the resource of a network of nodes, thousands of, yeah. you know, hundreds of, of, of nodes. Uh, and the main, um, you know, the second thing that we created is something we call the TE or the trusted execution environment, which is, is more like a virtual machine, like a sandbox where the AI okay. application get executed. So essentially, you know, when I'm utilizing an AI application, I'm deploying my application in that sandbox. I'm sending those data in the sandbox and no one can see that data except me, except the okay. rightful owner of that. So, you know, when we, we design our protocol, we have all these, you know, you know, constraints and limitation. And of course, things that people care about, like, you know, data privacy and, you know, keeping like um, intellectual property. So, yeah. you know, our protocol is designed with this element uh, at, at its core, at its core foundation. Is there a way to submit information as you go through using Open Fabric? and say there's a piece of data that you don't necessarily want to delete. You want to submit it to go into the overall collection of data. Is there a way to do that? Yes. So essentially, you know, we, in a way, we are building an ecosystem where we put together developers, infrastructure provider, data provider, and user. 
So you okay. can you can publish uh, some data as a data provider, and of course you you can monetize that. Essentially, okay. if, you, if you have some data or or training set or things that make sense to be used, especially for training or treating AI models, you can monetize that. We enable people to do that. So you know, also we are doing the same for the infrastructure provider. Let's say you have some 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 GPU. And you're willing to rent that, you can do that with Open Fabric. And of course, if you're a developer, you can create an AI application, deploy them on top of Open Fabric and, you know, monetize that. So, you know, we provide opportunities for, for all the party which, which are, you know, uh, participating in Open Fabric protocol. Now, when you speak on that and you compare it to Open AI and giving the users the ability to create their own models, you're saying that they can monetize with open fabric. How is that different or comparable to open AI and how they allow users to create their own models? So essentially with, uh, you know, uh, open AI, you can simply get their base model, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, chat GPT model and customize yeah. it and, and try it to create like your own model, which is more like their model, a bit customized, but with open yeah. fabric, it's quite different. We let people to deploy their own AI models. We let people to okay. deploy their own, like, you know, uh, uh, chat GPT, GPT like models, like their own models trained with their own data. Okay. But beyond that, we let them deploy any model they can think of, like, you know, a diffusion model, like, you know, this, text to image, text to video. Uh, we cool. don't, from a technological perspective, we don't limit people what kind of model they deploy. As long as they integrate with our SDK, they essentially, they get, they can get the already existing model, integrate with our SDK, and with a click of the button, they can deploy that. And essentially, mi millions of people are able to use those applications as they are without any more configuration, with any more, like, you know, technical work, or things like that. So, you know, it, it's about the freedom. You know, we want people to be free to create their own ideas, to their own application. So that's why we created like a protocol which abstract all this complexity and let yeah. end user, let, let developers to be created, to create things that bring value to the user. When we come back to monetization, is it blockchain based? Yeah, so essentially, uh, you know, all the transactions which are happening inside our protocol are utilizing native token, OFN. So right now we, we, launch, we launch our tokens uh, uh, and essentially people can, you know, utilize that for doing payment, exchanging value. And of course, to in a nutshell, we let people to pay for utilizing a application or, you know, being paid for providing infrastructure or deploying their own AI application with, with the native token. So everything happened okay. automatically and everything is, you know, uh, supported by the underlying, you know, blockchain protocol. That's something that's unique when you bring in the blockchain aspect, because most of the web two applications where you monetize, you have to wait three to five days to get that payment back to your bank account with blockchain. It is almost instant. And I think that's the brilliant idea that you guys have put together, bringing AI monetization into blockchain. I like that a lot. So the next angle is a dynamic consensus mechanism. Can we talk about that a little bit? Yes. Yeah, so um, essentially, you know, um, as I mentioned, you know, when we, we have to build, you know, open fabric protocol, we need a lot of new things, which didn't exist it in, in, in the blockchain, you know, uh, uh, space. So, uh, one of the things is that we have to, we, of course, our dynamic consensus is like, uh, it's, it's a proof of stake protocol, but we have okay. to expand it. We have to expand it for the requirements of working with AI applications. So in a natural dynamic consensus, it's about, you know, uh, selecting, you know, because in, in, in consensus, it's about, you know, putting together a set of validators and put them to take a certain, you know, decision. Whenever it's about, okay. you know, transaction and some data validity or whatever, it's about reaching an, a decision about something. 
So with dynamic consensus, the, the number and, and the set of validator, which are used to, to take a certain decision, it depends on the importance. So if it's a very important decision, a higher vo- number of validators is used, which means, of course, the, the, the time to reach consensus, it's a bit, it's a bit bigger. But when there are some very small, some not, not, I mean, no, like very, very high important decision, then you can restrain the number of validators so you, you can work faster. So in a nutshell, okay. th- th- this is, this is, you know, the, this is the main idea of, uh, of dynamic concepts. Of course, there are much more, you know, technical details on that. So we, we actually, we actually validated all the core concepts from our technical white paper. And if you go on the website, you see it, it's quite, it's quite intense. We validate all of that in, in a uh, computer science journal. So essentially all our ideas are validated by computer science, uh, researchers. Okay. So, um, yeah. Could you let the listeners know your website real quick? Yes. Yeah, so people can find out, uh, all the information about, you know, what we're doing on openfabric.ai. Okay. Great. Now, Another thing that I seen this week is you guys have a test net that is live. Could you talk about that a little bit and what you can do in the test net? Yes. So essentially we, we already deploy our test net and people can already experience because it's, that's another very important, you know, feature that we, we, we work on a lot. We want to, to create a, good user experience because you know it doesn't matter at the end of the day it doesn't matter how fancy your application are it doesn't matter how how much hard work is in that the people only care about how they can use it and if if they understand and if they like it so uh essentially in our testnet they were able to make use of our uh open fabric ai explorer aka the marketplace essentially people can Execute and use, uh, we, we already deploy like four AI application. They can deploy and use those AI application with the click of a button very, very easily. Okay. They just need the browser and have MetaMask installed and that's it. And essentially in just few clicks, you're able to, uh, you know, generate images from text to generate music from text. This is something very cool. Essentially wow. you, you describe a, a type of sound you want to hear, like a melody. You click on a button and you get the sound back. Uh, we also deploy something a bit more funny. We call it the meme generator. So you put like a joke and the AI would generate like a, a meme. meme, meme, meme with, with, with that, with, with that idea. Uh, and of course cool. we have something which is a bit more cool for, especially for marketing or for people willing to create like banners. We call it a QR generator. So essentially you, you put a link, you put like okay. a text and and the AI would generate like a very uh, a QR code, which is integrated with all kind of you know artistic inside the image. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, I see. Yeah. I, I don't know if it was going through your website and the applications, but I did see something like that this week, and I think I probably seen it on your Twitter. Um, speaking of Twitter, could you let the listeners know your Twitter account? So both personal uh, and business. Yes, so our Twitter account is uh, at OpenFabricAI, and my personal is uh, Tara Underline Andre. So okay, my name. Great. Now, the next angle I want to discuss is how do you guys tackle scalability when it comes to both the blockchain aspect and the data sets? Yes, so that's that's a very very good question because you know. When it's about a application, you automatically, uh, you know, have to think about a lot of data. You know, need a lot of data. You need to yeah. handle. You, you need to send a lot of data. Uh, so you know, that's one of the main things. Right now, we utilize IPFS for storage for application, uh, yeah. and of course, this we keep those data like off chain. It, it doesn't make sense to keep you know this kind of data on chain because it's it's very it, it's. It's close to impossible to to have like a blockchain that is able to store all that information. So we make a, okay. a clear separation between you know things which make sense to be on chain and things that uh, 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 have to be off chain. But one of the most important thing and you know and how we ensure scalability is you know by our you know DOS. 
or our decentralized operating system. So as I mentioned, okay. th- this is something very powerful because it's, it's like your computer operating, it's like your you know, MacBook or like your Windows operating system or like your Linux, whatever. Uh, the, with the big difference that is, is able to manage all these resources, like all the resources like a, of network of nodes. So essentially by adding up more, 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 more nodes, adding up more infrastructure, our capabilities of our protocol just increase. So this is something very, very powerful. You know, the more people are joining, the more people are renting the computational power, the more powerful, more, 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 uh, more bigger models we're able to execute. So we are not anymore confined by the capabilities of a data center of, you know, or the capability of a single entity. And, and, and this is something, you know, by itself extraordinary. It's like the internet in a way, you know. The bigger the network is, the the, mo- the most you know uh, powerful it gets. I'm thinking about when you look at, say, Google or Amazon, and how their data centers are built. Is there a possibility for in the future a blockchain based data center that has fifty thousand or a hundred thousand nodes around the world, and you store in AI infrastructure on that. Is that something that could really be possible in the future? Yes, so in you know in in a way, you know, if it's about to look at the things from a different angle, uh we are managing like a data more center. So, you know? Yeah. I'm I'm yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking more so just the data itself. Yes, so we know our, our protocol is agnostic. That means you can have like okay. one node running on top of Google, one node running on top of Microsoft, one node running on top of your computer. Uh, and, and this is something very powerful because we abstract what's happening under the hood. You don't, you don't have okay. to care about what's happening under the hood. So in a way, it's like, you know, managing like a data center, but with your, your computational resource being very different. Being, uh, yeah. you know, it, it can be, it, it can be whatever, whatever you have, because, you know, it's, you have this layer, which abstract everything, what's you know, on top of that. Can an end user play a role in the open fabric infrastructure? Yes. So essentially we, we just open up, uh, uh, onboarding for people willing to rent the GPU power. And okay. also we open up uh, uh, onboarding for people willing to be validators. So we just, we just announced these things like last week or something like that. And people okay. s- starting to, to, to subscribe to, to get onboarded in, in, in this. So essentially, if, so, if, if there are people, you know, possessing computational power, GPU, or willing to be validator, they, yeah. they have to just, you know, get into the list and we will we, we'll, we'll follow, follow up with them and see what are the next steps? Okay, great. Now, another thing you mentioned earlier is the AI application marketplace. Could we talk about that a little more in how many applications are available today? How many do you know are being built on the network right now? So uh, in in the public testnet, we have like four applications, which are more like, you know, to showcase, to showcase how things are working, to showcase... Yeah, it, to, to give people, uh, you know, a real time, uh, an idea. You know, yep. Yeah. A real, you know, n- not only idea, a, a real feeling about how things are okay. working. Uh, yeah. but, at the, you know, in, 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 in the backend, we already got like, you know, uh, 15 plus A application. Some of them okay. are developed by us. Some of them are developed by some early contributors. And on top of that, more and more are added. We just, you know, uh, started discussion with universities and, you know, uh, That's graduates cool. willing to, willing to build on top of our protocol, of course, provide them like support and guidance. Uh, and, and, and I think in, in, in very short future, we're going to see a lot of IA application running on, on open fabric marketplace. When do you see the full launch happening? So our plan for the mainnet is the Q2. This year. Okay. So it's, it's quite close. Of course, there, there's a lot of, you know, hard work that work, we, we're yeah. currently doing under the hood and 
we, we want to provide something which is truly polished, something that people can uh, and will are willing to use it, you know, because as mentioned, and, and, and this, maybe this is something to Web3. Sometimes people don't polish enough their, their user yeah. experience. They don't polish enough, you know, the, the, the product they're providing. So sometimes the end user experience is not that good. But we want people to have a great user experience and we want to reduce all the friction points. We, we want actually to onboard people from Web2. We want to let people who don't necessarily care about, you know, TPS, don't care about, you know, MetaMask transaction. We want to onboard people that, you know, uh, currently are, are more web to focus. We want to onboard them and, and bring it to open fabric. That was the next question I was going to ask is what type of end user are you guys focused on bringing in to the fold? And you just mentioned it there. It could be any end user from around the world. I was thinking people who are already using AI applications, they would be a good fit for the ecosystem. Um, another question I was thinking about while you were talking is when it comes to digital rights to what you create within the open fabric ecosystem, whether it's a song or it is a graphic, a photo, how do the rights work? for an end user so you know when when it's about you know and and this something you know you have to understand a bit how this generative because it, it's about generative ai so when it's about okay. generative ai uh you know the way the model are built ensure that each time when you're generating something this is something new that never exists and probably would not be generating a second time or, or it, it has a very okay. very small probability so in in, in a nutshell, you know, and, and of course, this is a, it's a very hard question right now. And there's a lot of people arguing about, okay, who owns something that an AI creative, which is trained on a vast amount of data, which are from, yeah. you know, from public domain. Um, but, you know, in a nutshell, the way they are built, this generative model, they are generate a unique output each time. So there are very small probabilities that two people are generating the same content and they can somehow, you know, fight over the, the ownership, right? The IP, right? Yeah. So, uh, so yeah. When, when you think about the open fabric AI ecosystem, an end user wouldn't have to pay for the rights. They would just own whatever they create. Well, that's, as I mentioned, that, that's a bit, you know, uh, you know, it, it's a bit dependent on the model and how the model was built. Okay. You know, normally, if, if the model that generated the sound or, or the, or the picture was built with, you know, open source, like, you know, no copyright images and it's trained with that information, then essentially the user can, can hold that, you know, uh, copyright for the output. But if the model was, is, is not something which is, uh, you know, train with, 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 uh, maybe it's utilizing that uh, information or data, which are, you know, owned by some, somebody, then yep. this is a different, this different type of, uh, of questions. So overall you know. in the AI sector, that's a big discussion at this point is whether or not you own the IP rights to whatever you create. And you just made a good point is based on what information that AI you used was built on and whether or not that information is copywritten or somebody owns the IP rights to what it was trained on. That's pretty deep when you think about that. Um, are there any closing statements you would like to give to the community today and address anything else about open fabric? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, you know, what, one of the, you know, most important thing, you know, that we, we managed to do up to this, for, up to this moment, we just build the foundation. Now it's time okay. to, to build on top of that. And we are preparing to release our new roadmap with some extraordinary features. Uh, and of course, we, we want to push the limit of Web3. We, we want Web3 to get, you know, more, uh, you know, to, to grow up. Because right now, okay. Web3, Web, Web3 is at its beginning. And we think we can do more. We, we can all, we can push the limit of Web3 and we can create a new type of ecosystem, which is 
changing the world, hopefully, in, in a good way. This is, this is what we truly believe and what we, we currently doing. So, you know, if there are people interested to see what we're doing, I will, you know, uh, gladly invite them to, to test our test net, to see the material from our website, to follow our social. Because, you know, we, we are, we are truly builders. We are building something that it doesn't exist in this moment in, in, in web three space and maybe in, 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 in the entire, in the entire world. But, uh, yeah, we, we are very happy when we see people utilizing our work. And I think this is something every builder is very, very, uh, very happy to see his work being used by people. Okay. Now, one more question for you before we go. Do you guys have an Android or iOS application? Do you plan on building one in the future or will it always be implemented through a third party wallet provider? So that's, that's a very, 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 very good question. So right now we are working on creating a mobile application. Uh, okay. that is more, more than just a wallet. It's something that will integrate, you know, the wallet, the will AI, in, the, will integrate oh, the man. AI, will integrate everything in, in a single, in a single, uh, the marketplace. Place. Yes. Everything will, we want to bring, and of course, it, it's a bit of, you know, uh, early disclosure. But essentially, we want to put AI in, in people's pocket. We want yeah. to have the AI every time with yourself, you know. So that's, that's something that we're That working would be on. incredible to have a wallet, have the AI aspect, and then have the AI marketplace to where how in most wallets you go to a DAP section, you would go to the AI marketplace section inside the application. That gets me so excited. Yeah. All right. This has been... Open Fabric, blockchain powered AI. Thank you for being here, brother. Th thank you very much. So glad to be to be here. All right. Have a good day. Have a good day.